meeting people where they are. I, I mean, it is exactly what needs to happen is right. what I do, you know, all day, every day. Um, but how does that happen politically? I mean, when you're trying to establish policy for large groups of people who are very different. Right. Well, I think it's, first off, you have to be in relationship with people. You can't do love, grace, or truth if you're not talking to them. Um, for me, as a conservative, I, I feel government is limited. So I'm not always looking for the policy solution. I don't think you can, you know, with mental health, for example, just like we, we are, um, ever since the time we've known each other in this like 10, 15 year period, we've had more awareness, more anti-stigma campaigns. We have the Affordable Care Act. We have health care, you know, uh, Medicaid expansion. We have all these things that are supposed to improve the lives of people, especially young people where the, the age of onset of mental health issues often emerges, supposed to improve uh, mental health, yet our mental health as a country is worse off than it's ever been before. Our, we have over 100,000 people dying of overdose deaths. Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, that wasn't even a tenth of that number, yeah. I don't believe. Uh, you know, the, the mental health and the depression and anxiety among our young people, the suicide rates that have increased right. dramatically. Yeah. So all the, all the work that we've been doing in, let's say, public health, a lot of times aided with government money, Mm -hmm. hasn't actually gotten us any closer to a solution. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at this, I'm not thinking reflexively about like what policy is going to make this better. Cause I think a lot of times it's not government can't love you, mm -hmm. right? Government wasn't designed nor is equipped to solve these problems. They may play a role at times, but ultimately these are things that have to happen at the individual and the community level. But when I see in the, the industries, they're advocating for top down solutions. I believe that conservative principles of individual agency, personal liberties, uh, personal responsibility, spiritually centered lives, nuclear families, things like this, these are the greatest protective factors against mental health and substance mm -hmm. abuse issues, particularly for young people. Um, but some of the things I just said, if you, they, you would be reviled for saying them in certain you know, leadership industry meetings. Mm -hmm. Not the individuals in the yeah. industry may individually believe it, but the collective organizational ego of these industries has uh, doesn't really permit the space for these ideas to flourish, despite the fact that they've been the ideas that have worked for countless individuals since the beginning of time. So can you be more specific? I'm, I'm thinking about yeah. in my field where um, most mental health professionals tend to be liberal. And I've always been curious about why that is. Um, and and I think it has to do with the fact that we're hands-on. We're in the trenches I, with, yeah. with individual people. And, you know, if somebody has not experienced the kind of, of love and nurturing and community, whether it's a church community or, a, 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 you know, a loving friendship community yeah. or family, um, and they're struggling, suffering, you know, depressed, they can't find a job because they're a little outside the box and, right, right. and you know, they need support and they need something from somewhere. They do. And I, you know, I agree that the government can't love you, but the government can, can help you pay your rent or can, you know, help you just survive if you need a job, if you need medication, if you, you need, that. I, and I think we, it's hard for us to say, well, you, you know, you're, you have a victim complex. Maybe they do. Maybe, you know, 10 years of psychoanalysis would help them figure out the victim complex. But in the here and now, that doesn't do any good to, you know, if you're in pain, um, somebody's got to help you from somewhere. And I, I think that's, that's where, uh, you know, we look to the government because what else is there? Right. I, no, I, I think that that would explain, I think that instinct to want to help would explain uh, why individuals entering the social work profession may very naturally uh, lean towards uh, a, a liberal view because the idea is, all right, these people, we, we want to provide support and this seems to be a, a, a way of accessing quick support for people. So it seems to be a rather logical leap that, people in the helping professions might look to the government to help. Um, I, I, you know, there's nothing illogical about that. I think the challenge is really asking the question, can the government help? How much can the government actually help? Um, and having the sort of taking that step back and saying, you know, 
can the government actually successfully address this? And at this point in time, where you know, since the 1960s, we've seen a massive increase in, in government support uh, for individuals ever since the war on poverty, really. Uh, you'd think with, with the tons of money we've spent, we would, uh, we would have improved certain conditions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, liberals, some of them may say, well, we just haven't spent enough money. We need more money. That's why we haven't solved it. I would take the view that, again, money can't, money can't or, or government spending can't pierce and engage your soul in the way that is needed to mm. bring the type of healing that people are struggling with. That, can, that has to come from relationship. That has to come from, from individuals and, and communities. And so I just don't think it works very well.